All right, you read the title, I'm not going to repeat it. Why is everybody so excited about React Query version 5, the brand new release? Okay, so in summary, these are the change logs. And one of the biggest breaking changes they introduced in v5 is the deprecation of something really popular in use query. In the past, we always had a query function and a query key. That is still the same in the v5. However, the way we used to handle errors was like this, with an on error callback on the query, which was already marked as being deprecated in v4 but was still usable in v5 this is the way to go about it we have to check afterwards after the query if we have an error that we can destructure from the use query that is a pretty big difference but not a bad thing at all but now for the new features what we're all here for what's new in react query v5 the biggest thing by far my favorite is the simplified optimistic updates this is how it works let's say we have a regular component and in this component we're just gonna mock a database let's say we have two to-do items in the database with an ID and a content each. By the way, if you're in TypeScript, this would be the type with an ID and content each, but we can ignore it for now. Let's start off fetching the data from our database. And as you saw in the previous example, we do that by using a use query that takes a query key that's only relevant for caching, it's not super important for us now, and a query function that's simply going to return the to-do. So whatever is in your database, for example. Let's map over this data and display it inside of a list. So for every to-do we're gonna display it and then for adding a to-do this is where the optimistic update beauty really comes in really shines in react query v5 the most important thing here is that we can now destructure a is pending state from the use mutation and with this is pending the easiest thing ever is adding this to our jsx and displaying another item or optimistic update that we want to display if the state is pending so if it's not successful or resolved just yet okay let's take a look at that in code to get a better understanding the only thing different here is that we now have a button that calls this mutation for us let's reload this page and we can see we have a to do a to do one and a to do two the to do's we have from our mocked database remember and if we click this button the add button right on top here then a mutation function is going to get called that is in turn going to call this mutation function right up here awaiting an api call just mocking that pushing a to-do into our mocked database array up here and lastly incrementing the index so that we can have to do three to do four to do five and so on and as you can see as soon as we hit this button this is the optimistic update in an opacity of 0.5. That is actually how most enterprises do it. So for example, Discord, the message will have an opacity that is lower in the optimistic update state. And once the API answered and is resolved successfully, only then will the opacity actually turn up to one. That is a beautiful approach to optimistic updates in React Query v5. And let's say we also rejected this. Let's see what happens. If we reject this promise, if something goes wrong in the entire API route, it doesn't matter. Let's reload the page, hit add. And as you can see, this is automatically removed after the API has answered what we mocked right here with one second. We don't need to worry about any of the manual stuff that we used to worry about in React Query v4. And the last thing they implemented is actually regarding a GitHub issue that is about two years old, which is pretty insane. And that is a new shareable mutation state right here. What does that mean? Basically, let's revisit this example right here and remove all the unimportant stuff. We don't need to worry about that for now. Essentially, there's a new hook we can use and that is called use mutation state that even takes a generic, for example, or to do so we can tell React Query what kind of data we are working with. Inside of here, we can get all the current mutations, for example, the pending mutations, and we can also give it the data that we want to extract using this hook. For example, the variables, what we pass into each mutation. To actually display them, let's create a grid in JSX and also map over all the currently pending mutations to show them on our app. If we now take a look at the full code implementation, only thing that's changed right here, we use mutation state, and that we are now displaying all the currently pending mutations. Let's take a look at what this looks like um, in reality, right? If we click this button right here in the add to do, we expect the pending mutation to be in here as long as it's not resolved or rejected. Let's try this out. Let's hit add to do. It's popping in here. And once it is resolved correctly, then you can see it translates from right here from the red area 
into this area and is gone because after all it's not pending anymore and the beauty of this hook is that we can literally use it anywhere it's not restricted to our app component wherever we handle the mutation this hook right here handles this mutation no we can literally use this hook in any other component it's shareable state and that is really cool. At the bottom line, I'm super excited with the changes that React Query v5 brings. I think there are no downsides. I think there's a lot of upsides, especially with the optimistic updates. The syntax is much cleaner than it was before. If you want to know a really neat data fetching trick that's going to help you in your next React project, check out this video. That's going to be it for me for this video. I'm going to see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.